Today I'm going to run you guys through my senior thesis, which is tied to my world building project, Oricredalia, and we're also going to be listening to the soundtrack that I released alongside the thesis. Without further dialogue, we're going to hop on into it page by page, and then I can talk a bit about what I plan to do next. I want to note that while recording this video, I was a bit under the weather, so I apologize if I sound goofy. The world of Oricredalia is structured vertically and is based off class and function. First Circle The highest point of Oricredalia, where corporate zealots are in constant commune with the remains of the Fane Ruka and Fane Oko. It is mostly abandoned due to its rising environmental hazards. Second Circle the middling point of Oricredalia, where a majority of civilian life occurs, and the third circle, which is the lowest point of Oricredalia, where products are manufactured for the second circle. Some pieces I've touched up while I was working on my portfolio, and when that happens I'll show the originals and then switch it to the new version. The purpose of this spread was to introduce the third circle and the factory districts within it by establishing a very heavy mood. You can see Panook coming out of the mist, Morta assets staring around, and the threat walls created from their corpses. This here is an example of the gates that you would see while navigating the factory, with some texture callouts, examples of how the gate would open and its function. Architecture in the third circle is both brutal and biological in nature. It brings to mind the mortal intersection between labor and access to existence, pushing these concepts to their extremes. This page here was kind of a quick uh, modular kit that I created for the book. I thought it would look good on portfolio. Sadly, I don't believe I did a great job representing the architectural style. Modular analysis of how the architecture can be split up and segmented into different rooms. These can act as a base or set for dungeons and other things. I like to paint over the modular designs and add further customization to them like props, foliage, characters, or etc. However, I chose to keep this one simplistic. Memory purses contain the reconstructed forms of Morta assets. Grown above the memory pools within large structures known as memory spires, the purses bring genetic material to maturity at a rapid pace. Upon achieving maturity, memory purses break away from the spire and into the waters below, which guide them to shore. Morta assets are then hatched and branded with the sigil of servitude and sent to their designated workstations, where they will remain until expiration. Workers of the third circle are born without mouths and with fused fingers to ensure they follow orders efficiently and cannot operate weapons properly in the event of an organized or singular revolt. Closely monitored and regulated, Morta assets are fated to work until expiration, upon which they're dissolved and regrown to repeat the cycle, wiped of all previous memories not associated with their assigned tasks in order to prevent any potential aggression with toiling centuries over to create products for citizens of free will in the second circle. Mutilated Morta assets are designed to oversee product distribution records, cargo manifests, and overall facility wellness. They conduct these tasks via ground terminals and hovering terminals, which are essentially biomechanical carapaces that link to the user's consciousness. The Shiv are the biomechanical punishers of Morta assets using fear to maintain production speeds. They are also responsible for surveying shores of the memory pool and guiding newborns to their workstations. And here you can see some clay busts I made of the Shiv. Originally I had this idea where they could replicate the faces of those they'd killed in their mouths, but that ability was given to a different creature in my world which I have not yet talked about. The moon are beings reminiscent of cephalopods, used by the Shiv to both intimidate Morta assets and correct their behavior. The moon flays its victim's mind and reverts it to base functionality. 
like task completion. In some cases, Morta assets are converted to supply additional security. I also have some early clay busts of the moon you can check out right here. Throughout the factory, there are these walls created from dead Morta assets who were deemed unworthy of resurrection. They serve as a reminder to Morta assets. If you don't do your work, or if you act up too many times, even without your knowledge, there is no way back. And this next piece is a rough painting of a meat processing branch of the third circle. And now we arrive to the second circle. I wanted it to feel grimy and utilitarian, but not disinteresting. This spread is supposed to establish that alongside its dreary and rainy mood. Architecture in the second circle is modular, sturdy, and somewhat affordable. Usually, a base of stone is carved into and adorned with metal accents and biomaterial-based fixtures, which provide light, water purification, and other needs. Here are a few sketch examples of how housing clusters fit together for my portfolio. And here's a painting of what it could look like to walk around on these streets for yourself. Of course, I imagine a lot more lively things happening, more people, more creatures, more going on. This is just um, a bit of a time constraint type of deal here. And here's an exterior for what the common civilian abode would look like. I've done a lot of work on this one, so I'll show you that now. Hello, it's a new day. I'm no longer sick. Here are some window callout things I did, as well as some examples of how the structures can vary depending on the type of building. It's crazy how much easier it is for me to talk. Here are some fucking progress work things I threw on the side. And then this here was my first attempt at making an infinite sketch kit, which is a kit made from either created assets or assets ripped from pieces finished earlier on. And it allows you to kind of create these quicker sketches and paint over them to get ideas flowing. Uh, it's, it's heavily inspired by Thomas Scholes. I don't know if you know him, he's an incredible artist and I recommend looking into his work if you haven't seen it. But this is just the first result I've, I've done using a kit like this. I, I hope to come back to it later on and see what else I can come up with. This is another piece I touched up for portfolio purposes. Superb Rice is a subsidiary of Clerico's Sustenance and Consumption Branch, considered by many as the most popular restaurant franchise in Oricredalia. It is best known for its low prices and questionable flavor profiles. Due to an archaic corporate ordinance created to support local business, Superb Rice is a hot spot when looking to hire members of the Nightly Vast or other types of unique services. And these are phasmic generators. These generators transmit phasmic waves throughout the air. This allows for the operations of small to medium electronics such as televisions, communication arrays, and personal grade LUN hover gravity drives, which provide power to levitation vehicles. Thick wires drape these generators and are attached to larger structural units like buildings, factories, and dams. Panook can enter through the generator's central vent to provide maintenance. This one here is a bit of a variety page. On the left hand side I have studies of how buildings in the second circle can vary aesthetically amongst themselves. 
Moving on from that, I have some foliage, which I had recently redone in another page for my portfolio. Now this page also included some weather studies for the civilian abode exterior, which I'll pan through here so you can see those. Make sure you're not missing out on any incredible content. I made a little sandwich out of everything. And outside of those two, I have the crates. Now the LEDs on these crates indicate whether or not there is anything inside. They can vary drastically in size and are found all over the place. It is recommended not to store perishables within them as they are not refrigerated and your shit will mold. Now this modular analysis here I feel so much better about than the first one. I'm gonna switch it to the portfolio version I made because it looks a good amount better. I'll read the description. Oh, I don't think there is a description. Well, never mind. On to the next one. These here are your Morda civilians, the more generic type of people that would be living in the second circle. I'm kind of doing this thing right now where I'm redesigning everyone to have a much more gothic aesthetic, but keeping all the mushroom hats and fun stuff like that. These are the crit cartridges, identifying cartridges used by civilians for home access, purchases, transit, and many other types of utilities. And then I got some sketches down here of what they were looking like throughout different phases. Many Morta civilians choose to undergo body modification for a variety of purposes. It involves fusing biomaterial with their flesh through incredibly invasive surgical procedures. With these next pages, I have some more examples of the augmented Morta. This individual has augmented his coil to become more proficient in his career. This is commonly seen from minor to extreme examples, such as barkeepers being entirely integrated into their establishments and becoming one with the building. With high class Morta, they're more staunchy folk, obsessed with aesthetic union, consumption, and capital. In their nature, high class Morta tend to be incredibly vain and self-concerned, resorting to philanthropy only to engage with identity politics. Most high-class Morta are on the lower end of corporate ethereralism and likely have some rudimentary form of biological immortality. Corporate entities are capitalist zealots that have relocated to the second circle due to the growing instability of the first circle. They are responsible for a majority of forced gentrification, and while their link to the Fane Ruka and Fane Oko is weaker in the second circle, these are still very ill-intentioned individuals, always accompanied by Batarillus Machus, personal guardians, and databases. Protectorates are willing to die to protect corporate entities and the way of life that the Order of the Fane has enacted within Oracridalia. They are grown within specialized memory spires that are hidden from the general populace. Here we have our primary protagonist, Malib Usilis. He is an impish cat comparable to the intellect of Morta and capable of speech. He is quick-witted, brash, enjoys alcohol to a concerning extent, and according to him, could easily kill Akari in a single fluffy punch. Akari is essentially the raptor of this world. I didn't get to put them in my thesis. Malib often finds himself taking on multiple tasks while working in his delivery job, such as pest control, archaeological findings, and minor corporate espionage. Malib prioritizes himself before everybody else, yet cares very deeply for his found family. Our secondary protagonist is Moru, an escaped slave from the Third Circle. Partially mind flayed by a moon, Moru is not entirely mentally sound. This is symbolized by the piece missing from his mush cap. He works alongside Mleeb and is prone to aggression when seeing injustice. His weapon is partially an ode to the modern immersive sim, Prey. Maru's weapon of choice is a sturdy and well-crafted steel wrench. The wrench is utilitarian, yet still decorative, as most objects in Oracridalia are. It's a non-invasive and reliable weapon not prone to breaking and is easy to clean. Plus, it works great for fixing something up in a pinch. Because of his long arms, it serves his movement patterns much better than a sword or dagger could. And with that ends my senior thesis walkthrough of Oracridalia Design Works Volume 1. I hope you enjoyed everything you got to see and the tunes along the way. I do have a good amount of index pages which delve further into lore. If you guys want me to make a video about that, comment and I can have that up pretty quickly. 
And moving forward with my world building project, I already started drafting out how I want Design Works Volume 2 to go, and I want a lot more concept art that feels like it could really be usable in a, in a video game. Also explore deeper into the corporations, the type of products people use, and other areas like Tarakia, which is the desert zone, and Noluk, the flooded district. I want to release more music. More importantly than I think any of that is that I want to find a way to get it published so that you can get a copy for yourself. That is the ideal goal. My next video is going to be covering a fake DLC that I made for Dead by Daylight, which has been a lot of fun, and then also the bookbind I did of this project. So thank you guys for checking it out.